We have seen the devastation that took place 15 years ago in Cakeland. A severe storm spotted about 100 miles west of Wichita, aimed for the small town of Greensburg. A tornado touched on the ground for 65 minutes, taking the lives of 11 people and wiping out the city. Those 65 minutes changed everything for the community, and it's inspired a special project at Cake, a documentary taking a fresh look at the storm. And this morning, we have Lester Rowe. He is a creative producer here at Cake and the director behind this project, which again airs tonight. Lester. So glad to have you here. Oh, I'm glad to be here, Allison. So glad that you are a part of this team. <laughs> what can we expect from this tonight? What you can expect? Um, a lot of emotion. You know, it's a look behind the scenes of what goes into, uh, you know, showing, you know, reporting mm -hmm. weather, severe weather. Uh, but also it's a look at that town, the emotions of that town and everything that those people went through. You know, for me, I did a lot of research on it, you know, look at every story about it, too many stories about it, and everything was kind of fact-driven about the weather, the science and stuff like that, and I wanted to get people into the feeling of it, what it's like to go through a, a tornado of that magnitude, but also lose everything. Yeah. Um, you know, from, you know, Jay uh, reporting it, Jay Prater reporting it, but also the people on the ground who had to live through it. Mm -hmm. This is uh, interesting because it's not just pulling the archive footage and going over it uh, with our meteorologists, which was fascinating in itself, but you also went back to Greensburg. You went to Greensburg, met people. Uh, what was that like? It was emotional, uh, for sure. I know going there when I came back, it did change what I wanted to do with the documentary. Uh, originally, I, I did plan it to be really short, seven to 13 minute kind of story, but uh, when we went out there, you know, up until that point, all I saw was the devastation and all the, you know, yeah. everything being tore up and going there and I'm seeing it for the first time and I'm meeting these people. I knew that we had to tell a much bigger, richer story about, you know, what happened there. Where did this idea come from? Why did you land on this idea? What drove you to do this? Well, my department, where we work in the creative side, we are, we help you know, create the visuals for the news brand itself. Mm -hmm. uh, one of the first projects I did here was a Greensburg story. So when it came back around, I wanted to do something a little bit more special with it and tell a bigger story. And um, that was the real inspiration behind coming back and doing something that felt a little bit more into what I like to do. Yeah. 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 And you use the word emotional. I mean, of course, we can expect a lot of emotion, but there are some moments in this that uh, might take some viewers by surprise just the emotion that's shown through your camera lens. Um, you know, you're a filmmaker. You're very well known in the filmmaking community around here, but now as you take a look at this documentary and you're able to express real people in a documentary format, you got some moments out of this that people will be surprised about. Yeah, uh, more specifically, Jay Prater, Lanny Dean, one of the uh, old uh, storm chasers. That was a major, major moment. It was one of the last interviews we did, and he reveals a lot of things that we can't even show in the documentary because it did bring that level of emotion and devastation. It made it real. Yeah. Um, there, even inside of the documentary itself, there is a, a nice five minute window that I call the immersive experience where I want you to feel what those people went through. And I think you do that um, uh, in so many different ways. Did anything surprise you working with someone like Jay? Like you said, the emotions. We get to see Jay every night on our screens right. and get to see that side of him. But you got to see a whole other side of yeah. him. Yeah, that was uh, intense for me. It was really intense. I mean, we're going to have some bonus stuff on Cake Plus uh, for people who want to watch it after they watch it on Cake. But... It was intense because I never seen him speak that way. We're mm -hmm. so used to him being so well delivered and professional and to the T. Mm -hmm. And this was pulling that curtain back, um, yeah. showing him in a different light. Everyone that's involved, sh showing uh, them from a different light, even Deb, uh, Deb Ferris mm -hmm. and, and Dave Grant, one of the news directors here. So the cake weather department are talking to all meteorologists, getting a different take on that severe weather coverage. What did you learn from them? Too much. <laughs> I learned a lot. I mean, even with uh, Frank, some of the stuff I learned from Frank, um, you know, when I when I pitched this out and was asking people for interviews, they had no idea what I was working on. So he everything he told me, 
was just him talking. And uh, everything kind of webbed, webbed itself into the Greensburg conversation. And so everyone, when they talk about Greensburg, they have no idea that this is the story that we're making. Huh. So I end up learning, you know, how he got into it and what he thought, which you'll see in the documentary going into uh, May, May 4th, 2007. Yeah, and we just want to use this moment, too, because I know you're not going to do it yourself. We okay. want to shout out the team um, that was a yeah. part of this. Okay. Uh, for one, you, so thankful to have you a part of this team and being the driving force, but so many amazing people here at Cake that made this happen. Yeah, one of our com uh, commercial producers, Tim May, he was integral in, you know, being a support system for me. Annette Lawless was really the MVP I keep saying because she went and found some of those interviews that I wouldn't have been able to do from my little producing bay uh, as well. And Jacob C. Smith, uh, mm -hmm. he did the music. He's one of the producers. I think he's producing right now. Yeah, yeah he's yeah. in our uh, ear right here. <laughs> he did the music, a, a lot of the music and scoring. So it was one of those things where I could, you know, I'm most proud of being able to bridge this gap between what we do on uh, uh, creative side and the news side and finding those people who you know, have strengths that I yeah. wouldn't be able to bring if I did it by myself. Absolutely. It's a great group. Yeah. And this is a lot to celebrate as well, the launch of Cake Plus. So for those viewers out there who are wondering, what is Cake Plus? How do I get it? Lester, what's Cake Plus? Cake Plus is the streaming platform that we have on, uh, was it Roku? Yep. A Fire yep. Stick and Apple TV. So if you download that, you can get the TV experience, which is important. But uh, as well as the streaming experience that you can have, you'll be able to go back and look at old news archives, weather, uh, but as well as a lot of the exclusive content that will go with the 65 Minutes Greensburg story. Absolutely, and this is just hopefully the first of many uh, new projects to come from Cake and to go on to Cake Plus and have you behind it, Lester. Yeah. Well, we'll see what the viewers say. There we go. <laughs> we'll see tonight. That's uh, when... 65 Minutes of Greensburg Story debuts. It was 28 miles long, and uh, this is quite the story that is captured here in this documentary. It airs commercial-free tonight on, uh, on Cake at 6.30, and then, of course, on demand, streaming on Cake Plus.